Well, hello, everybody. This is my first uh, look at the Antelope route in Train Sim 4. And uh, I haven't even looked at the Metrolink yet. I'm just going to get into Antelope Valley line and go into freight. And I wanted to show you something here. Um, choose. You, I can, because of the different downloads I have, it's given me uh, many options other than the Metrolink that can be layered in. And not only that, I have my own personal liveries here. And I never do dynamic weather, especially if you're out west. Um, it just it doesn't really make sense. We'll give a little bit of light clouds, not much. And what we're looking at is, I want the intermodal, Seattle Intermodal Terminal Part 2. We'll get started with that. And then we'll have a little discussion on uh, what I found so far and some of my thoughts. Ah, here we go, getting started. Boy, that's a pretty color scheme. All right, let me go ahead. I like it more bright. Um, more options. Brighten that one up a bit. Locomotive. I don't know what the distributed power, if it really does anything as far as getting the other motives to operate with you. Ah, oh, here we go. Ear brake. Trail. Lead. Cut. Lead cut in. Okay. And there's no save. So I think we're good. Uh, I'm not using the ATC or any other mode. So I'm good to go. <clears throat> Gotta make sure the generator's on. Headlights. Dim. And the first thing we need to do, since we're all cut in, is make sure we got uh, our locomotive brake on and then release the train brake so I can get up our air brakes through the whole system. Hey, those headlights look pretty good. Now, I, uh, you can see here, our brakes are coming up to equalizing brake pipe, 82, equalizing reservoir at 90. Let the brake pipe get up a little bit better. That's probably, probably good enough to get us going. Throw it in first to see if we're getting any traction. This takes a while. All right, we're starting to get some traction. Definitely want the sand on. And we're gonna want more traction. Mm. 
release the brake. Oh my, that's nice. <clears throat> and here we are. We are on Antelope Valley. We're in about the middle of it here. Right, uh, we're doing this last stretch. This down here, I think, is the L.A. area, and this is the whole... I'm doing the whole northern part. And I hadn't done it yet, so uh, I'm looking forward to the scenery and seeing how everything looks. Definitely looking good. Take a photograph. I know everybody's excited about the new photo tools, and I am too, but uh, it's a lot of fiddling around when every now and then you want to just take a quick photo. You know what I mean? And, and there you have it. Uh, awesome. Beautiful color scheme for this Southern Pacific. And Antelope Valley with freight. So you can see that it gets layered in if you have the, the downloadable content. And you can go ahead and do freight. Now whether or not it's realistic, I don't know. I, I don't really care. Um, I'm not a train nerd that way. Um, I don't know. I guess I'm nerdy enough to some extent. I want realism and to some extent I just I just want fun. And maybe the fun outweighs the, you know, the river counting and all the, all the details that a lot of people talk about. I imagine we can give this thing, it's going to need a little bit more oomph. Because we're only doing about six miles an hour here. And you can see he's got 51 on the traction. That's what I'm looking at. Let's really notch this thing up. Get this thing moving. Got the green light. That's uh, clear. So the next block is clear. And I think we're going at the single track anyway. So it's going to be clear for a long time. My original, uh, uh, so yeah, I, I guess before I get into my original impressions, this came out September 26th, today's the 27th, this is the next day, um, getting back into it, and let's talk about the first day. I did not have early access, I did not buy the deluxe edition, I am, uh, I live in Florida, in the United States. I love things like the Scotsman, the old steam stuff, and the Vectran seems like a phenomenal uh, European uh, diesel engine. However, um, it's not my interest. I want to see American steam. Uh, and boy, uh, once, once we get some American steam, if, if indeed that ever does happen, I will be excited to use the new free roam to stick that on, you know, the clinch field and some other other routes where I just love to see the steam be going through it. In fact, I may end up taking some British steam and sticking on there in the off the rails mode anyway, just just for fun. But uh, what happened? What happened yesterday uh, for somebody who had the standard edition and their first time to download? was yesterday the 26th of September um, oh uh, it was a struggle it was a struggle for me but looking back it wasn't really not that bad at all it's just it was just being overly excited I think a lot of people were so excited about getting train sim world that when I couldn't get it instantly on uh, you know at the top of the hour when it was released um, people were in the forums and I'm including myself 
uh, in the dovetail forums and say, hey, what's going on? Uh, so what happened with me, I think, was pretty standard for what happened to most everybody. And that was, we went into, um, and, and, and let, let me tell you, I had this, I have Steam, so I'm using the Steam platform. So I have the Steam release, and so I think it's a little different experience depending on what platform you have. And maybe uh, the Steam release was a little bit more difficult. And, and I say difficult, it wasn't difficult. Let's just go through what happened. So I, I downloaded it, and I expected, my expectation is it was going to take a long time to download. I mean, maybe hours, because I have so much Train Sim World 3 routes that I'm, I'm looking at, uh, you know, a good amount of time to get it all to, to come together. But that's not what happened. Uh, it, it downloaded Train Sim World 4 in no time at all. And, yeah. You know, slap my hands together. Uh, I'm ready to go. Uh, it's ready to go. I boot it up. I'm hearing the music. I'm playing the game. And the only thing I got is the training center. I don't even have the three routes to come with it. I thought... What is going on here? Do I have to go through all the training to get to get access to my routes? So I made sure I uh, set it to expert mode. Uh, well, there's two things I think, uh, and I can't even remember. It's all kind of a blur because you know, with, with all the stress and excitement of wanting to get it, um, my my thought was, well. Um, yeah, when you first load it up, it asks you, oh, I see that you uh, you already have the game. Um, you will be coming in as, you know, an experienced player. Uh, and so all the routes will be available to you uh, because you're not coming in cold. And so, you know, I set it up for experience. And, uh, you know, clicked on that during the download, uh, during the uh, first first boot up and then I went into the settings and I made sure it was set to expert mode <clears throat> like I said I don't even remember where in the settings uh, I was so panically I was going through all the settings thinking where is it where is it and now I can't even tell you it's it's in there somewhere and so it was it was set up to uh, uh, where I was experienced in, in, in expert mode and yet I still didn't have any routes and I'm thinking you can't uh, expect me to go through all the training it, it, it's that's that's torturous uh, and so uh, it, you know I, I got into dovetail games forms and I noticed everybody's there and everybody's coming unglued uh, this is a disaster well it's just the way it came across it, it's not it, it was not a disaster at all uh, it didn't take but, you know, a little bit of time, and the next thing I know, I had uh, 20 big, uh, I think it was 20 gigabytes of download uh, on Steam uh, coming through. And I don't even know how it, if it just triggered on its own, or if I want to get in and out of the game, the next time I got out, it started to automatically update. I thought, oh yeah, it needs to do the update. And so it's doing the update, and it's doing the 20 gigs. And and then I thought, oh, I'm good to go. Everything's fine. And um, I'm in there, and yeah, I got my three routes. I got the Antelope Valley, which I'm, we're driving now. And we're slowing down. I better really give it some boost here. And I have... Um, you know, the other two routes. in the... Uh, Uh, what is it? The uh, oh gosh, you know, I'm not even. I'm so excited about you know, the the U.S. stuff. I'm not even thinking about what's, you know, the Germany uh, Austria route. I'm I am excited about that. That to me is probably the best, the best thing that's coming across. But I hadn't. I say that without having experienced it yet, but having looked at it in video, I'm I'm, I'm very excited about that route. And then of course the other route uh, for you know for the UK and 
uh, I just wanted to get in and 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 uh, look at uh, look at my my downloadable content for trade. I need to know that I'm not losing it. And all I do have the those first three routes. I'm looking at it and thought, okay, great. But go back to the forums, find out what's going on, and everybody's complaining. It's a couple hours have gone by by this point. And then I noticed, as well as other people uh, noticed as, uh, too, that all of a sudden some more downloads are coming through. And they did, you know, and it took uh, another hour or so because most of us have uh, close to 100 or more gigabytes of downloadable content from Train Sim World 2 and 3. And so it took quite a while for that to come down, depending on your, you know, your speed, your downloading, uh, you know internet speeds and uh, mine are pretty good and so you know it, it took me I don't know three or four hours and then I end up watching uh, some TV with my wife we were watching sports and um, you know later on in the evening I was ready to go and it's good no, no problems you know when I think about it uh, there was a lot of excitement in the, in the uh, forum and calling it a complete disaster. It wasn't. It, it 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 went it went smooth in my mind. It went smooth. It just takes time. Uh, and if if you've been away and you've been waiting to get home to download this thing, just just know it's going to take some time. Yeah. So yeah, I, I just went through my thoughts on the. Uh, you know, on the on the uh, download and the installation, and then actually after that download, everything installed. I thought I was going to have to go in and check separately each and every downloadable content I had in the past, because that's what they seem to say. And it may be the way you have to do it in Epic Games and some of the other platforms, but with Steam, it all came through. Uh, I didn't have to go in and go into properties downloadable content and, and check boxes they were autumn uh, I did take a look at that they automatically checked everything and it all came through and I was fine ready to go so it was uh, you know with all the all the complaining and distress in the forums is actually in my in my sense a very good experience uh, you know having spent uh, you know decades downloading games since the 1980s I mean from the beginning of computer game time <laughs> you know um, it, it, this this has been good uh, I have not been to the, the uh, to the to the uh, other two routes in train sim 4. I've only been to Antelope Valley, but to be honest, um, I'm seeing Antelope Valley really for the first time right now, because I did do this for about 20 minutes, and I don't think I got this far last night. Um, but I spent most of my time making sure some of my train sim world three routes like horseshoe curve and uh Kuhan pass and uh, i mean sherman hill I'm not sure did i get up to sherman hill a uh, cane creek I, I was checking out the different downloads uh that i own to make sure they were looking good and functioning and they are but then i was screwing around with the free roam thing and i got a lot of thoughts about the free roam stuff um, and I had a, a quite a bit of difficulty using it. To be fair, I was purposely doing the things that were outside the realm of what they tell you to do. So I didn't go into, you know, I didn't go into, into uh, well, it's not here, but it, it's, it's in the um, main menu and enter into free room with a blank slate. Um, at least not at first I didn't. I just went into a timetable and I thought, hey, I want to check something. I want to check 
I want to check if I can change the path of a timetable train. That's not, you know, something that that I generated on the rail myself using the tab key. So uh, one of the things that's been talked about so much is free roam, free roam generating uh, uh, trains, locos, uh, and taking off with them. Uh, but what has been kind of neglected, and maybe it's in, it's because it's been it's included in free roam, but it's really a separate animal, and that is setting the path. You don't really need to be in the in the free roam environment of getting out of the seat and being on foot and hitting the tab key to set a path. You could be sitting in the locomotive in your in the engineer's chair and just um, yeah. Well, let's do it now and just hit the nine key, and then uh, all you do is hit that, and then you can remove the. Move, remove the path and set a new path or whatever it's it's that simple so you don't even need to be in free roam however it's very problematic if you do it that way so like I said this isn't the, no, the normal way they suggest doing this stuff taking pictures as I go here This is, I, I'm very much liking this. Very much liking what I'm seeing. I got a blinking yellow, so you need to understand we're doing an approach. So we're coming on an approach of something. Let's take a look, see if we can figure out what it is. We got a long ways before we approach anything. So. It, but there is a lot of mountainous curves here. So I'm, I'm just thinking that the, the approach speeds, we should keep an eye on that, make sure we're keeping it down. Yeah, let's, let's just keep it at 20. But yeah, my first impression, I mean, I'm looking at, this is this is my first impression as I'm talking to you. It's quite beautiful. I'm loving the mountains in the background. Now, as some people have said, some of the mountains are kind of blobby looking and some look fantastic depending, you know, depending on the perspective. So, I'm, I'm very pleased. Um... I've also noticed in watching other people's videos that there was a lot of stuttering and stuff down in the LA area. But since I started up the mountains and not in LA, I don't know if I'm having that problem. I have a mediocre card, a medium graphics card. It's a 3070. And, you know, uh, sure, I wish I had a 3090, but a 3090, I think, only gives you a slight benefit. In performance and and it's a big leap in price so to me between the 3070 and the 3090 that's that's the price that's the price point where you jump considerably in price look at those buildings up on that ridge but yeah I'm not here to talk about that uh, I, I've been doing very well with this card Let's kind of do a real fan view here. Oh, 
Well, here you have it. I'm doing freight on the Antelope Valley. Uh, I am interested in going ahead and doing the passenger, the Metrolink, I think it's called. I definitely will be interested in giving that a try. Um, but I can see myself doing freight here even more often. Whether it's realistic, I don't know. But I'm liking it. Whoops, sorry about that. I don't want to be swinging around so much on camera. A lot of bends up here. Yeah, what other thoughts do I have? Um... Well, I did want to talk about the God mode, or the God mod. Um, because it doesn't come with Train Sim World 4, but a few days ago, God mod uh, and the train community was updated for Train Sim World 4. So about, four, about five days ago now, they did an update and the God Mod now works in Train Sim World 4. Now if you don't know what it is, uh, you just dump it in uh, your folder like you would any other downloadable content and it adds this menu on the very top of the screen uh, to make real-time environmental, you know, there's modders log, there's a, a different, different things up here. but. You can do all kinds of different things with the environmental settings, make it more cloudy, more sunshine, on the fly. You know, so that's kind of nice. Make it rain. Change the season. But, I am... I'm thinking this God Mod is the very thing I've been talking about. It's going to allow me to have a career mode. Because if I'm driving a train like this and we get to the other side, and at that point I want to say, okay, I'm done for today. I did my task as an engineer for today. Uh, what's time lapse to the next day? Stay in free roam mode in a sense, uh, because you know, without completing any, ob if you even if you complete your objective, tell it to go into free roam, and and then come in here and you can change the time. You can change the time and date. So this is really interesting because currently, what time is it? It's 14. So it's 2:05. So, I go into God Mod, and we could change it to 16. And change the time of day. So now, it's 4 o'clock. And if I want to change it to the next morning, I can do that. So, in a sense, I can uh, I can bring my train to its uh, completing of, of the objective. If it's the end of the route and I've completed the last objective, it goes into the performance screen. I say, go back into free roam. I'll free roam out of this. And then go into the, uh, then get off the train, you know, lock up the train or whatever, get off of it, walk away, uh, pretend I'm going into an office somewhere, and then uh, go ahead and change it to the next morning. Save the game, come back in, and I'm using the same engine. 
Um, I don't want to give up control, but I'm coming back and starting the next day. And here you have, I'm in career mode. I can then actually walk through like a career, walking through time. And I mean, I've been asking for this and I don't know why it's not something that is part of the normal uh, train sim world package where we can do a career like that. Hey, if and that especially not so much like an engine like this where I'm running from one one city to another, uh, but you know, especially if I'm doing switching duties and I'm lo uh, I'm running local deliveries out, and then back, then move to the next day, running the same locomotive. Uh, eventually, I'm gonna run my fuel out, and I'll have a reason to go refuel. I have a reason to come back and play the game as if I, you know, I'm continuing on with the career. The only thing, uh, you know, that they do now uh, in Train Sim World is they have the journeys. Well, the journeys is the way they think it's a career, but the journeys is just it's just a kind of a convenient way to run through all of the scenarios or all the whole timetable. And if you want to randomize it, you can randomize it and switch it up. And then, and eventually, um, you can run through all of everything that's in the timetable. So, I think uh, I'm very happy with Train Sim World 4. Um, what I see going on with the mountains is uh, a, a big step forward. Free roam, and, you know, I, I now am thinking of free roam as two separate packages. The free roam package of, uh, well, it has two parts to it. It has the ability to, to on foot put any train on anywhere on a rail anywhere you want on your route and secondly the thing people keep forgetting or not talking about as much is it allows you to with the map view to go in select your motive and reroute I can remove a path and then set a new path and reroute it now what I'm finding is I mean, they warned us about this. If you're in timetable mode, try this stuff. But what I'm finding is it becomes very problematic if you if you try to set a route in timetable mode. Why would you want to set a route in timetable mode? Well, the reason why I want to set a route in timetable mode is I don't want to start I don't want to start a game with a clean slate where there's no trains, no static trains, no locomotives anywhere. In the, in the route. So if you start in the service or timetable mode, you've got AI trains, you've got trains all over the place, and I, I'm gonna spend some time learning how to deal with that. Because it is problematic, I had some difficulties with it, and, you know, uh, I'm gonna, I'm, we're gonna, I think we're gonna have to learn what, what the limitations are, what, what we, we can do, it doesn't seem like I can take a timetable locomotive like this one and and set a new route and it be okay. It ends up being a problem, at least in the, in the short term I have. And now it seems better, I think, if you create your own locomotive. I've done that too over in Horseshoe Curve. In timetable mode, I removed the timetable uh, I removed the engine that I entered in, just removed it, put a new engine on, but I have all the AI trains going, I have all of the, the stock cars that are static all over the place, and, and that seemed to be, and I set my path, and I was, I was free to go. Um, what I couldn't back, but I did run into a problem where I was trying to back into a, into a siding, and the AI train came up and we were at a standstill. Now, that's not the fault of anything. That's just, that's really my fault. 
So there's going to be limitations, but we're going to have to learn all that stuff. But the most disappointing thing I got to tell you was, I'm so excited about having the freedom to go to all these places you couldn't go to before. Uh, and Horseshoe Curve has a bunch of areas that, as far as I know, are available. But they have, you know, in Johnstown, they have a whole yard of tracks that are really phenomenal looking as they dodge in and out of buildings and, 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 and they have all manual switching in there. But there's an invisible wall. And with the invisible wall, boom, you can't do anything. You can't get through. You can't get, I don't care if it's free roam or not, you cannot get through the invisible wall. And people have discussed that because the first time we really noticed it well, was years ago uh, with the Oakville route in Canada where they had the invisible wall and you're driving a train and it smashes into it. But Horseshoe Curve has an invisible wall in Johnstown so you can't get into, main, into the main yard. Uh, this line here has an invisible wall if you try to cross the river in, uh, in the LA region. And um, I don't know how many other invisible walls there are that are going to keep us from really using the free roam. But I think there's going to be places that I know are available on our own old routes, our old DLC that we're going to be able to use, and I'm excited about that. Some new looking trees here. Looks like a, well, looked like kind of a, a willow, but it's, I think it's a cedar. Yeah, uh, there is going to be some new vegetation here and in Europe as well. So that's going to be good. I know people always want more. Um, Another impression I want to tell you about was it doesn't seem much different than Train Sim World 3. It seemed like a year ago when we went from Train Sim World 2 to Train Sim World 3 there was noticeable differences. I don't even remember what they were, but they just felt it just felt different. And I was I was glad I upgraded. And in this one you don't get that feeling. But the differences are kind of hidden, you know, uh, with the, the free roam, the, be, the setting of path, and the things that we're going to have to learn how to use. And the mountains are nicer, and there is some new vegetation. So I am excited about the future here, and that the you know, all the talk. If there was something else in my mind I want to talk about, I'm going a lot longer than I wanted to, but this is a long route. And no, need, <clears throat> no need to go for two hours on it, but let's get our speed back up here. Losing ground again. I do like the new HUD. <clears throat> uh, if you notice my old videos of Trains in World 3, I kind of had my HUD set up this way anyway. So I, I do like the new HUD. Well, there's a stutter. You know? So I don't know what's coming in. But I'm coming across a, an old dirt road or something, but I'll give it all the horn. Here's that invisible wall. I can't go down the road any further than that. Yeah, you know, I'm not sure I understand that either. Why can't I take the camera further than... You know, it's kind of aggravating. I can't really take the camera and look around. So if the camera can't go, you can't walk, you know. 
And that's how I, and actually I knew that from horseshoe curve that the camera wasn't let me get into some areas. I kind of got the camera to cheat its way in, but if I, once I got on foot and I tried to walk the track, it wouldn't let me. And so if I can't walk the track, the train's not going. That's for sure. You know, one thing I like to do with the camera is go over to the road and you can't because there's an invisible wall. I like to, every now and then, uh, I look at trains a lot from the road, from driving down, and I kind of want to get that perspective. I mean, many of us are watching, you know, if you're playing this game, you've certainly, uh, when you're driving around the town, have looked at trains going by or as you're on the road. and. Uh, anyway, so that's some of my first impressions. Uh, so the invisible wall is still there. Um, what else did I want to say? I don't know. I'm definitely going to be coming back and talking about free roam uh, when I have more experience with it and, and uh, revealing my findings on that. But. On the Those horns don't have a lot of volume to it. But this is a pretty route. It's got um, a, a bit more vegetation. Um, even though it's not as bare as some of the desert routes can be. Now, I do spend... I live in Florida, but I do spend about five, six weeks of the year in Nevada, which is desert. And there's areas that look like this, and there's areas that look more like, you know, Sherman Hill or something, where you don't see any trees at all. But, um, you know, going from one, one place to another, uh, I do like that there's a little bit more greenery here. That's about right. Uh, somebody mentioned there wasn't enough greenery. There, if you look at the mountains, there's some greenery going up in the far mountains. That's perfect. That's the way it looks, and, and uh, I can tell you from firsthand. Uh, but I did see some of the some mountains that did look a little bit brown, uh, and that happens too. Pretty spot. Oh, yeah, I've been talking forever. Oh, is this the RV park with the floating car with the floating RVs? Yeah, I wanted to show everybody the floating RVs. Are they floating? Or is that my imagination? So the shadows aren't right. Because uh, those look like they're on... No, that one's floating. So it's the shadow effect. That's how you know if it's floating or not. Anyway. I'd rather not look at that. Everything looks good over there. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm liking this route. And hopefully you guys are liking the idea of riding freight. You can do it. It's available. It is a single, you know, uh, single rail. Uh, so you're not going to come across any AI trains for the most part. Um... But it, uh, it satisfies that quench for a longer route, for sure. Uh, just uh, moving freight. 
One of the things I've thought about quite a bit is I've always thought, well, I'm always talking about having a, you know, a group of cars, wagons for you, uh, European type. A group of cars that you drop off at local industry. Um, but if you are to have a single commodity, of uh, a long train like this one with, you know, all, um, uh, gosh, intermodals, you know, container cars, if you want, and, or coal cars or hopper cars or a, a tanker cars, any single commodity. Well, if, I, if, if that's what I'm going to be doing, then I really would want a long stretch for that single commodity to run, you know, because that's, you're not going to be doing it other than picking up coal and, you know, bringing it to a yard. You, you, want, you want a longer run for single commodities, at least I do. Anyway, I've been talking for quite a bit. Um, we're only going about 20. You know, I got to tell you, when I'm in... Uh, when I'm spending my weeks up in Nevada, uh, and I look at a, a train, uh, it's usually a UP, um, of course, and it has either a long freight or, or sometimes I once in a while you see a short freight doing some local work. Uh, but there, you know, it's pretty much a single line like this, and I'm, um, I can see it for hours off the side of the road. They don't go that fast. You know, they're, they're normally going between 20 and 35, you know. Even though they got nothing for a long run, you know, that that's all they're doing. <laughs> and I think most of the time when I'm watching them, they're, they're just putzing along around 20 miles an hour. Anyway, I think I have a lot on my mind and I'm gonna say goodbye and and think oh my I wanted to talk about these other things too well there'll be another time and place for that so we'll catch you next time <laughs>